And joining us now to speak more on the prison decongestion and, of course, Nigeria's criminal justice system is a former second national vice president, uh, Nigeria Bar Association, MBA, Adikuli Ujo, you have. It's good to have you with us, sir. Thank you so much. Happy to be with you this afternoon. All right. Very good. Now, I would still like us to talk about uh, the Lagos bill on parade of suspects, uh, which is, uh, we believe, has been passed. Uh, but. Uh, I think the governor is still yet to assent to that. But, uh, of course, uh, there's been debate over time on the parade of suspects uh, before the media. But beyond the protests by civil society organizations, the general public has not really complained about this act when you observe closely. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, well, well it's not really about um, the general public complaining. Mm. It's about doing the proper thing. And if we are not doing it right, we will look quite absurd to the international community. I tell you, the civility of a country is often determined by how you treat your prisoners and how you treat those that are your, 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 your suspects. You see, people want to know how you, because if you are not taking good care of them, they are apparently the entire populace is at your mercy. Perhaps nothing much will be done for them. Having said that, one thing that we should bear in mind is that um, the, the issue of um, uh, 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 pre-trial media parade, it's only peculiar to a few countries. And Nigeria happens to be, I mean, the epic center of this practice. Perhaps in few other countries that were even doing like Bangladesh, they have changed it. Because at a point, a very high-ranking judge had to be paraded in the open as having committed. And the question is this, should you do that? Is it really important? These are questions that we need to ask ourselves. And again, let it be borne in mind that we have had two occasions for this matter to be tabled before the court. And in one of it, I think 20 million naira was awarded in favor of the, 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 the complainant, one Obono, who complained that, look, I was paraded, and it's a degrading treatment to me. It's an human one to me. I, 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 my, 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 my prestige was lowered unduly in the eyes of the entire populace. And he got that. And I remember one other case in Federal Court Abuja by uh, it was Justice Bola Joko, I cannot remember. The, the name of the, the, the complainant was Induche, I mean, the accused person, Induche against his person. The question that she asked is this, this is in Uman, do you really need to do it? And it's marks of incompetence, let's be fair with ourselves. Nobody is, you are not under any pressure. None of the, uh, 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 the bodies, the, 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 where either the IG, uh, the police or the EFCC, you are not even under pressure to impress us. Do your job and leave the rest. That's what really matters. And again, it amounts to double trial. If a man has been convicted in the, in the public sphere, it even intimidates not only the accused person, again, it's a blackmail on the judge. By the time a judge sits on it, he says, ah, this man that has been convicted openly to the whole world, how will I escapate him from this crime that is hanging on his neck? So all these things added together, these are reasons why we really need to change. Well, like you said, Lagos State has done something meaningful in that aspect. For me, really, I don't really think the Lagos State can pass a law restricting or, I mean, trying to dictate how police will do their job because they are not uh, 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 legal state um they, they, they are not appointed ask yeah. you what will now be the outcome the relationship between the legal state government and of course the uh, the federal police itself because uh, wouldn't that be a case of having well, well, friction in, well in all fairness you know. i've read the section 9 that we talked about okay. it doesn't really have any punitive provision mm. it's only it only says that the police is barred from doing a public parade or media parade of a suspect. It hasn't gone beyond that. For me, they should have gone beyond. One, mentioning police there was unnecessary. That's the truth. What matters to you is that any of these organizations, you don't need to be any prosecutorial organization that is involved. You don't need to be bothered. If, you, if the state had said, OK, a, a, a media parade of a suspect prejudices the rights of that suspect and thereby is whatever whatever investigation that 
was done could not be said to have been properly done. It's like if we say, okay, don't, if you want to investigate, if you want to do, um, uh, if a client, if a, if, a, if a suspect decides to make a confessional statement, let it be done under certain circumstances. And if it is not done under that circumstances, what happens? It means that that confessional statement, statement should not be admitted. So in that wise, if a man comes around and says, oh, look, he's been paraded openly and this has happened and that has happened, my expectation is that the state will go further. It's either whoever, is either the, 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 the uh, security outfit is penalized, it's either the media houses are penalized one way or the other. There must just be a, a, a repercussion for doing it. What we have today, there isn't any repercussion. The consequences are not well stated. Okay, because that's what I really wanted to yeah. get to, to the heart of the matter, because yeah. I understand exactly where you're coming from. You're talking about the uh, social implications, and you're also talking about uh, from the inmates or from the, whoever has been, uh, who has gone through this, you're talking about the impact on them. But I actually wanted us to hone in on the actual law at the moment from what you're saying is it not clear-cut because we need to understand no, 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 no. In, in terms of parading suspects is it legal or illegal well or? i would say without mincing word that it is illegal because it is an affront to the constitution if it's an affront to section 34 of the constitution which says that a man must not be subjected to torture a suspect must not be subjected to torture and he must not be subjected to inhuman treatment a degrading treatment. A man that you hang a, a placard on and said this man is so suspected to have done this, you hang it on him and you subject him to an unnecessary quest answer, a question and answer session before the media, you already prejudged him. So let and, me clarify. And, and again, that to me, it's a contravention of section 34 of the Constitution and is another consequence of the, the, the section 36 that says that you should a man is presumed innocent until, innocent until found guilty. It's, it's an affront. Yeah. So um, yeah. All right. let me just okay. quickly, uh, you know, so for that extent, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. Right. Okay. So based on that, what you've just said now, the number and thousands of people that have been paraded in this country, can they actually sue for any for any kind of uh, psychological damage or, or uh, damage to their reputation? When I am aware that somebody has sued before, one uh, Obono and he was awarded 20 million naira. Meaning that if you are subjected to that kind of a thing, approach the court. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I'm, I'm aware, based even beyond the, the, our constitution, there are international instruments that you can rely on, like the African Charter, uh, 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 African Charter, like so many other instruments outside there. So basically, it is about people sitting on their rights. And again, one thing that we need to be a bit careful for is that, look, there is nothing wrong in, um, in, in, uh, in, the, in, in the media uh, trying to get first-hand information, trying to do their reportage and all whatnot, mm -hmm. but then we need to be a bit careful. We need to rein on ourselves so that at the end of the day, we will not be infringing because often questions, the questions and answers are often conducted by the media. Mm -hmm. How did you do it, Mr. So, so so so? Where are you from? I know. No, we shouldn't do that. That's the truth because we all owe the duty to protect this constitution. Right. Perhaps because if the police, for one, if the uh, um, um, the the security agencies, if they have not done their job very well, in fact, outside this place, you will have concluded your investigation because it's like using the pre-trial media uh, 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 parade to conduct investigation, oh, and you don't need to do oh, that. Sorry, yeah. I would like us to delve on the issue of uh, prison decongestion, or congestion rather, and the efforts at trying to decongest them, as right. it were. So how would you describe the narratives behind this phenomenon? What are the causes, and uh, how is it impacting on the judicial process? Uh, of course, and uh, the, we're talking about the prisoners' rights. Has it also been infringed upon in this uh, case? Well, let me say that in some claims like India, mm. if you are kept behind the bar pre beyond where you're supposed to be before your trial commences, it becomes actionable. You can, that whatever trial they want to conduct, you can as well approach the court and say, yes, your right has been infringed upon. But our courts in Nigeria, we are yet to get to the, it, re it, it requires some extreme activism for a judge to come out and say, look, you have detained this man for three years. 
over a case of, you know, that's what I'm talking about. I say, no, look, this, if he approaches me, seeking his right that he's been overkept in the prisons and he's asking to be, I would do that for him. But unfortunately, we have not gotten to that level. But having said that much, is it, I'd like to make an instance. Recently, we had the, 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 the COVID crisis sit at home thing. We had the, the Jusun strike, whereby the courts did not work for a long while. And I found out that, look, it's about human effort. It's about a determination to do the right thing. And I found out within that period, even the security agencies, they did the right thing. The bulk of the cases that ordinarily could be settled, they resolved it. And it's a matter of response, because they knew fully well that, look, if we have to keep these people with us, we have to feed them, so many other things has to be done. And again, is that I will talk about responsibility. For the courts, when people that are not supposed to be kept behind the bar in the prisons, they get to the court, ordinarily, and, 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 and right. a, a judge should be able to say, go yeah. home based right, on this then. and not whatnot. I'm afraid that's what we're going to have to leave oh, it, but thank you so much. Quite an interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you.